Jeremiah 39. In the ninth year of Zedekiah, king of Judah, in the tenth month, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and all his army came against Jerusalem and besieged it. In the eleventh year of Zedekiah, in the fourth month, the ninth day of the month, a breach was made in the city. All the princes of the king of Babylon came in and sat in the middle gate, Nergal Shereza, Samganebo, Sasheshim, Rabsaris, Nergal Shereza, Rabmag, with all the rest of the princes of the king of Babylon. When Zedekiah the king of Judah and all the men of war saw them, then they fled, and they went out of the city by night, by the way of the king's garden, through the gate between the two walls, and went out toward the Arabah. But the army of the Chaldeans pursued them, and overtook Zedekiah in the plains of Jericho. When they had taken him, they brought him to Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon, to Riblah in the land of Hamath, and he pronounced judgment on him. Then the king of Babylon killed Zedekiah's sons in Riblah before his eyes. The king of Babylon also killed all the nobles of Judah. Moreover, he put out Zedekiah's eyes and bound him in fetters to carry him to Babylon. The Chaldeans burned the king's house and the house of the people with fire and broke down the walls of Jerusalem. Then Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, carried away captive into Babylon the residue of the people who remained in the city, the deserters also who fell away to him, and the residue of the people who remained. But Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, left of the poor of the people who had nothing in the land of Judah, and gave them vineyards and fields at the same time. Now Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, commanded Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, concerning Jeremiah, saying, Take him and take care of him, do him no harm, but do to him even as he tells you. So Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, sent with Nebuchadnezzar, Rabsaris, and Nergal Sherezer, Rabmag, and all the chief officers of the king of Babylon. They sent and took Jeremiah out of the court of the guard and committed him to Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, the son of Shaphan, that he should carry him home. So he lived among the people. Now, Yahweh's word came to Jeremiah while he was shut up in the court of the guard, saying, Go and speak to Ebed-Melech the Ethiopian, saying, Yahweh of armies, the God of Israel, says, Behold, I will bring my words on this city for evil, and not for good, and they will be accomplished before you in that day. But I will deliver you in that day, says Yahweh, and you will not be given into the hand of the men of whom you are afraid. For I will surely save you, and you won't fall by the sword, but you will escape with your life, because you have put your trust in me, says Yahweh. All right, so this is the moment of the siege, and the ending of the siege all summarized quite concisely. It says that the siege started in the ninth year of Zedekiah in the tenth month, and the siege finished in the eleventh year in the fourth month. So, the ninth year, 10th, so it's two years later, it's not quite a full two years later, it's a two year siege, but not a full two year siege, and um, so Nebuchadnezzar is surrounding the city, things get really, really bad, there, there are cannibalism, all sorts of horrible things are going on, it's a direct fulfillment of the, the word that was spoken by God to Moses in Deuteronomy 28. We talked about Deuteronomy 28. That was one of the longest videos I've ever made. It is the what I call the saddest chapter in the Bible. And um, Deuteronomy 10, 28 was a prediction of what it was going to be like if the Jews turned their back on God's covenant. And so when Jerusalem fell, that's a fulfillment of it. In fact, it's fulfilled kind of like twice. In both the destructions of Jerusalem, there's a fulfillment of it. This is the first time. There are four accounts of the fall of Jerusalem in the Bible. There's here, there's a second time in Jeremiah, and then there's accounts in the books of Kings and Chronicles. So we've come to the moment when all of the prophecies of Jeremiah, which we've heard over and over and over, that the Babylonians are coming, Jerusalem will be destroyed. Finally, it's all happened. So King Zedekiah <laughs> decides that he's going to bolt. And wouldn't you do that too? So there must have been like, it sounds like there was like a secret tunnel of some type. It doesn't 
describe it super well here in this chapter. It's It just says they escaped through the, the garden near the gate between the walls. It doesn't give you a really good description. When I was reading Josephus, it sounded to me like there was like a secret tunnel, which the king and a few people knew about, and they were able to like get out of the city by this like secret tunnel. So they're escaping. It says in verse 5 that they um, went down to the Arabah and Zedekiah, they caught up to Zedekiah down near Jericho. That's like 30 kilometers away. So they have gotten away a fair bit, but the Babylonian army figures out what's going on and catches up to them. When they catch up to him, of course, they bring him to Nebuchadnezzar at Riblah, which is another city a bit further north. And there they pronounce judgment on him. Now, um, I think I've mentioned this in other videos, but in in um, in Josephus, he mentions a prophecy of Ezekiel. Oh, it's actually in the Bible. It's in Ezekiel chapter 12, verse 13. We're going to get to that soon. We're going to go through the book of Jeremiah, then Lamentations, and then Ezekiel. When we get to Ezekiel chapter 12, we're going to talk about this word that Ezekiel had for King Zedekiah. So you'll remember that the there were three defeats to Jerusalem. It's only the third one, the one we're talking about now, where the city is burnt down. But in the other two defeats, they, they took prisoners away. And in the first time Jerusalem was defeated, they took away Daniel as a prisoner. And he's in Babylon prophesying. And um, in fact, Daniel and Jeremiah wrote letters to each other. We've spoke about them earlier. So Daniel and Jeremiah knew about each other. And um, of course, Jeremiah, he was saying that, you know, Babylon's going to, you know, Jeremiah was saying to Zedekiah, Zedekiah that, um, you know, basically the king of Nebuchadnezzar is going to basically destroy the city and take you away to Babylon. When the second time Jerusalem was destroyed, exiles were taken away. One of those was Ezekiel. Now, Ezekiel was also prophesying, and in Ezekiel 12, he prophesies that Zedekiah will not see Babylon. So we've got these two prophecies. Jeremiah is prophesying, prophesying that Zedekiah will be taken away to Babylon. Ezekiel, who's already in, in exile, he's prophesying that Zedekiah will not see Babylon. So you've got these two prophecies that seem to be contradictory, and Zedekiah decides to believe Ezekiel <laughs> and decides to disregard what Jeremiah is saying. And so what happens here is that Zedekiah is captured down near Jericho. He's brought to Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar kills all the officials, kills his children while he watches, and then pokes out his eyes and takes him to Babylon. So he, he is taken away to Babylon, just like Jeremiah says, but he does not see Babylon, just like Ezekiel says. It's a direct fulfillment of the words of both of the prophets, and uh, you could not have picked it. And there's no way that Zedekiah would have realized this. He, he, should have <laughs> he should have just trusted the Lord and believed what he was being told. And so um, the city falls, the city is destroyed, the city is burned, bucket loads of people are taken away as slaves, heaps of them are killed, and Jeremiah is, they leave behind the poorest of the poor. But Nebuchadnezzar says specifically, Jeremiah... I want him looked after. In fact, treat him the way that he tells you he wants to be treated. Take care of him. Now, how would Nebuchadnezzar, you know, the bad king, Nebuchadnezzar, how would he, he have even known about Jeremiah? Well, there's probably lots of ways he would have known, but one of the ways he very certainly would have known is from Daniel. Remember, Daniel and Jeremiah are having letters, they're writing letters to each other, and Daniel and King Nebuchadnezzar are on talking terms, Daniel's managing the city of Babylon while Nebuchadnezzar is not even there. And Daniel would have said to him, Jeremiah is a good guy. <laughs> he would have told him what Jeremiah is saying. King Nebuchadnezzar would have known Jeremiah was telling him to surrender. So King Nebuchadnezzar knows that he, that he you know, he basically knows what the Lord is saying. He knows Jeremiah is a good guy and he wants him taken care of. So, Nebuch so Jeremiah is saved. He is not destroyed, he's rescued, and he's left in the land with those he has not taken into exile. And then the chapter finishes with a word for Ebed-Melech, who was the guy that saved Jeremiah out of the pit. 
and the Lord promises to bless him because of what he did. So the chapter is basically the the story of the, the fall of Jerusalem and what happens to Jeremiah. But in the middle of this chapter, we have this interesting thing where we observe the prophecies of both Jeremiah and Ezekiel towards Zedekiah. They both seem to be saying opposite things, but they both turned out to be completely true. And I have to say that sometimes the word of the Lord is like this. Sometimes the word, the word of the Lord is always true exactly like it says, but it's amazing how often we don't think we don't see how it was true until after it has happened. And um, it always comes down to the fact that we need to put our trust in the word of God and believe. And um, But we humans, we're just like Zedekiah. Our natural instinct is to distrust the word of God. But in Hebrews chapter 11, the Bible says that God is pleased with us when we have faith. It says without faith, it is impossible to please God. In other words, when you do have faith, you please the Lord. Faith is this this quality of trusting him. So when God says something to you, like, follow me, well, trust him and do it. (laughs) When the Lord wants you to give up something or to go do a certain thing that you're struggling with, Trust him. When you do that, you now you may not know everything that's going to happen in your future. There may be things you are uncertain about. That's the nature of trust. The nature of trust is that you're you're going to believe that someone's going to look after you, even though you don't know what's going to happen. And so the Lord is trustworthy. You know, Zedekiah, he um he to believe the Lord, to believe what Jeremiah was saying, would have meant he had to go out to the Babylonians and surrender. That would have taken trust. I remember years ago in trying to cross a road in India, I was with a youth mission, youth team, and we were in India visiting some friends. And um, we had to cross this really busy road in Chennai. And we waited for about 10 minutes for a gap in the traffic. There was no gap. In fact, there was never going to be a gap in that road. That road was just so busy, you had to do what the locals did. You just had to step out into the traffic and trust that the cars would stop. And, well, we ended up just doing it. (laughs) You just walk out and you slowly walk across and the cars just go all around you and let you through. And it took, it was something unnatural to us. And it turns out that following the Lord at times involves this very unnatural feeling of trusting him. But what you find is the longer you walk with the Lord, the easier it gets because you find out that the Lord can be trusted. And uh, (laughs) so my encouragement to you is whatever that thing is that God's wanting you to do, which is hard, do it. Place your trust in him and see what he will bring about through it. Lord, I thank you that you are a trustworthy God. You are Lord El Shaddai, the Almighty One. You're faithful. You're unchanging. You're a solid rock. We can place our lives upon you. And I pray this lesson be embedded into our hearts today. In the name of Jesus, amen.